In this video, we are going to talk about eigenvector centrality. It's another important centrality measurement. The importance of a node defined by eigenvector centrality is affected by two factors. First, how many connections it has. In this graph, node A and node B both have degree of 3, but we won't say that they are equally important as we see that one of the connections of node B is very strong, and it should make node B more important than node A. So the second factor makes sense, that is, how important the connections are. Eigenvector centrality is a more sophisticated view of centrality. Intuitively, it considers not just how many people you know, but also who you know. It balances the quantity and quality of connections. A node with few connections could have a very high eigenvector centrality if those few connections are very important. Since the centrality of a node would affect its neighbors, and in turn centrality of neighbors would affect the node, eigenvector centrality needs to be calculated in a recursive way until the mutual influence between nodes reaches a stable state, and we call this tendency convergence. The example graph is directed. A node receives influence from its neighbors through incoming edges. Node B and D have in degree of 1, A has in degree of 2 with in neighbors B and D. C also has in degree of 2 with in neighbors A and B. Because node A has higher in degree than D, so we guess that in this graph, node C has higher eigenvector centrality than A. But let's see how exactly the calculation is done. Initially, we assume that all scores have an equal centrality score as 1. In the first round, update the score of each node by the sum of scores of its in neighbors. For example, for node A, its new score equals to the sum of scores of node B and node D, and it's 2. In the following rounds, update the scores with the same rule. We see the scale of the scores gets bigger in each round. However, it's hard to determine when the stable state is met. Stable means that the relative size of all scores doesn't change. For this purpose, we apply L2 normalization to all scores after each round. So, after the first round, the scores of the four nodes are like this. And after we run about 20 rounds, the scores don't change anymore. Look at the scores, it's the same as we analyzed. Node C has the highest centrality, and then node A. Node D is influenced by node C, so it has higher score than node B. The calculation process we just conducted can be expressed by matrix multiplication. We have to introduce this concept that seems a bit complicated in order to understand the secret of convergence. We could write the adjacency matrix A of this graph that reflects the incoming edges of each node, and the initial scores of all nodes can be represented by a vector S0. In round 1, the update of scores is equivalent to the multiplication of matrix A and vector S0. In round 2, S2 equals to A times S1 equals to A squared times S0. To generalize, as k equals to the k's power of a times s0. This is actually easy, and let's jump to the other concept. Given a is a square matrix, lambda is a constant, x is a non-zero vector, if the equation ax equals to lambda x is true, then lambda is called the eigenvalue of a, and x is the eigenvector that corresponds to lambda. This adjacency matrix A has four eigenvalues and four corresponding eigenvectors. Interestingly, eigenvector x1 is the same as the stabilized score vector S20. Actually, x1 is special since it corresponds to lambda 1, which is the dominant eigenvalue as it has the largest absolute value among the other eigenvalues. This is not a coincidence, it's a consequence of the prom Frobenius theorem. It states that given matrix A with some eigenvalues, 
it's important that the magnitude of lambda 1 is bigger than all the other magnitudes, and they have the corresponding eigenvectors x1 to xn. No matter which non-zero initial vector s0 you use, as k grows, the k's power of matrix A will always lead this vector to converge to x1, which is the dominant eigenvector of matrix A. Based on this theorem, the calculation of eigenvector centrality for a graph is actually the calculation of the dominant eigenvector of its adjacency matrix A. This method is called power iteration. Start with an initial vector. In each iteration, multiply it with matrix A and apply normalization. Iterate until it converges to some preset extent. We will use a host parasite network to run the demo for eigenvector centrality. Host parasite network is used in the research of infectious diseases. Many diseases in humans arise from animals. Identifying high-risk animal hosts of parasites would help to predict and prevent new pandemics. In the network, each host has multiple parasites, and each parasite lives on multiple hosts. Parasites could be passed from one host to another through ways of close contact or indirect contact. We model the graph like this. For each two animals, if they have any parasite in common, we link them together and record the number of common parasites as weight. In Ultipa graph, every edge must have direction, but shear parasites is a bilateral relationship, so we insert two edges of different direction but of the same weights between every pair of hosts that share parasites. In this way, we built a graph with 217 host nodes, they are all primates to be specific, and 15,436 share parasites edges. Next, we will rank the host by the eigenvector centrality. A host with high centrality is considered as a strong spreader of parasites. Let's switch to Ultipa Manager. This network is already imported. It has node schema host and edge schema share parasites with the property weight. Let's check the two hosts we just saw. Use a NEM pass template. And we can see there are two edges between them, both with weight of 3. If we spread from one host, we can see the other host that share parasites with it. Then let's write the algorithm. I'll go eigenvector centrality. In prems, I set tolerance as 0 0.001, max loop num as 200. I think it should converge within the tolerance in less than 200 runs though. Set the shear parasite's weight as the edge weight. Give it the descending order. I want to view host from high rank to low, and I'm interested in the top 20. The results, by default, two colons are given, UUID of the host and its rank. However, we saved the host name in the property ID. So let's first change the algorithm execution mode to string in order to use the algorithm results in the subsequent UQL. Then find nodes by the UUID colon of EC, give it another alias called host. In the end, we can return the IDs of host and the corresponding rank and combine them in a table. And we run it. We can see pen troglodyte is at the top, followed by gorilla gorilla, papio annuobis, and so on. These animals can be considered crucial in the parasite transmission that deserves special precautions. You can refer to this page of the UQLs we just used and refer to these links if you want to learn more about graph algorithms and Ultipa graph database. The first one, Ultipa Cloud, is a cloud graph database service where you can open your own instances and build graphs. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to subscribe our channel. I'll see you next time.